Hello everyone, welcome to this introduction to SolidWorks program. Today we're going to model a hinge. At the end of the tutorial you should have a hinge similar to this picture and you can use the same file to 3D print out an actual hinge using a 3D printer. So uh, the first thing you need is the SolidWorks program. When, uh, after you finish download it, click on the SolidWork icon and you will see this page. And when you click on this uh, new file icon, you get this uh, interface pop out. And in it, you have three different selections. There's a part, assembly, and drawing. So in part, you first need to create a, a individual part in your overall um, project. So for instance, when we want to make a hinge, we first have to create a hinge and a pin. Then after that, we can use assembly to combine the two hinge and a pin together to create our overall hinge design. And this assembly, we in this assembly we can see how the hinge um, actually come together and make adjustment accordingly. Lastly, after we finish our project, we can use the drawing option to document our work so if for instance in this case we would we will create a diagram showing how one would to make a hinge with uh, all the dimensions specified so if someone wants to replicate your work they simply need to look at this documentation to do it instead of asking you about it and the correct the correct unit is um, your choice of unit type so the first thing you should do when you uh, select the part uh, section of the three option is to select the unit of measurement that you want to use which is here in our case we will be using millimeter then you will see a big uh, blank space that is your viewing window and it is uh, where you will see your 3D object. Then on top of it, you can see the viewing option. In this viewing option, there is a variety of way for you to uh, view your 3D object in different angle. And I'll go through, I'll go over more about it in detail at a later time. So next, you will see the design tree is a list of all the uh, changes and feature you added to your part. The very last entry is the latest entry that you make to your part. Next on top is your command bar. Command bar is the, the area where you will find most of the tool that you use to create your 3D object. So there's a three important tab of the command bar you should be familiarize yourself with. First is the feature tab. The feature tab is where all the tools that you would um, use to create a 3D object from a 2D sketch or you can uh, modify your 3D object. In the sketch tab is where you will find all the tools you will need to create a 2D sketch to um, be a reference point for you to create your 3D object. Lastly, you have your evaluate tab. What this tab mainly does is it contains all the tools you needed to evaluate the part that you made. For example, say you want to um, determine the, the dimension of a specific area within a part that you make, you would use this measure tool. Lastly, in, in your main window, there's always a search help box up top. You can click on it and type in, uh, say for example, the name of the tool and I'll give you more information about it. Otherwise, I would recommend you Google the function of the tool. That way, it's a quicker and better way to get help. So in this tutorial, I will go through the basic process of how you would go and des design and create a 3D object. So first of all, whenever you may want to make a single part, you always want to start by sketch, sketching the 2D sketch, sketch a basic model of the part. Next, from that 2D sketch, you want to extrude and create a 3D object from a 2D sketch. Next, I will show you how to you, how to remove a material or a part of a 3D object, which is an extruded cut. Also, I will show you how you can sketch on the surface of the of a object you already created to add complex feature to it also i will show you the 
the uh, non sket feature of SOLIDWORKS. So in SOLIDWORKS, there's a sket feature and a non sket feature. What that means is to use a sket feature, you need to first create a 2D sket to, to use that feature. And the non sket feature is the one that you don't need to uh, create 2D sket to sket on it, to use it. Then I'll show you some easier way and quicker way to do extrusion. For example, there's a tool called Revolve and, and that will help you create a round uh, object quick, quicker than you use extrude tool. Then a fillet um, tool, it is a non sket feature which is really helpful to create smooth surface on, in your 3D part. Lastly, I will uh, be provide a documentation diagram to, to create this hint without the need of watching this video. So right when you click on SolidWorks, you see this uh, SolidWorks interface. Click on the uh, new file icon or use the uh, short key, which is Control N. Then you see this um, window pop out. Keep in mind, we are using SolidWorks version 2017. So the interface would be a bit different on uh, version 2018. But the general idea of three component, part, assembly, drawing are there. So let's click on part to make our, our part, our first hint part. So since we are here, the first thing we would do is again, go to uh, your uh, measurement area, select um, millimeter, gram, and second measurement unit. This is a, a, an arbitrary choice, which means that if you are making your own part, you don't have to use this uh, type of uh, yeah, measurement format. Now, if you look at your design tree, now if you look at your design tree, you you see we have three different planes: the front, top, right plane. This is the surface that we will start drawing on. So let's select uh, the front plane. When you click on it, this small window will pop out. You want to select Sketch. Note that it's highlight and it tell you you are in the front plane. And also the Sketch tab automatically is selected. Now let's create our first sketch. Go to your sketch tab. Uh, find the center rectang rectangle creation tool. Right next to it is a drop down arrow. Click on that and select the uh, the uh, second option. Uh, keep in mind there's multiple ways to create the rectangle. So right when you click on the that tool, notice how your cursor have the icon of creating a rectangle in center. When you hover over the origin point, you see there's a own dot appear. So click on that and create a rectangle. Notice how everything is in the blue color. Blue color means it is undefined and therefore you can move the sketch however you want. So to exit out the uh, create rectangle creation tool, just double click on your escape key. Now let me sh uh, show you what I mean when I say it is a uh, undefined sketch. So when it define, you can move it however you want, change the me uh, measurement of it. To fully define a sketch, you go and select the Smart Dimension tool. Again, go to select Smart Dimension tool. Click on the edge of, uh, of, of uh, the size of your rectangle to select that uh, area. Then you can change the measurement. Let's enter 30. Same case of this side, because we want to make a square and we want 30 millimeter. Notice previously I didn't enter a millimeter, it's because we explicitly specify that it is a millimeter unit base. So we default that, that measurement format. Now let's exit out the uh, sketch tab by clicking on the exit sketch. Notice how it's a, it's a, great, it's a black color now instead of a um, blue color line. So make sure you always select the, the sketch you just created. And know, notice how you just created a sketch one. That means it's the first thing you did on your, your design tree. So now go to Feature tab. Click on Extrude Box. Notice this yellow box that appear. It is a uh, preview of, of uh, how the 3D shape going to uh, appear and be created. If you click on this uh, Reverse Direction uh, tool or button, I will switch direction of extrusion. Right, you can manually adjust the uh, thickness of how much you want to extrude out. Or we can simply enter the value of the depth, which is we want three millimeter. Again, I don't have to enter a millimeter. It's just a good uh, practice. 
Now we click um, OK with a check mark to confirm our option. Now, let me show you the, some of the viewing tool. If you click on the space key on your keyboard, you, you um, see this uh, 3D cube. And you select different surfaces to view at a different angle. Like this. Click again. There you go. Now I will show you how to create a sketch on top of your already created 3D object. So let's select one of the side of the uh, square that we just created. Click on it to select that surface. And then click on sketch. And do not click on add a sketch. Add a sketch is, is when you want to make changes to your previous sketch. But what we want to do now is just is sketch on top of a, a, <coughs> a surface of an object. So click create a sketch. Notice how you generated, you just generated the sketch number two. Now to zoom in and out, we would just use the uh, this this scroll wheel on your uh, computer. I recommend that you should use a mouse to uh, to <coughs> use solid work. The reason for that is uh, trackpad um, is a bit difficult to use with solid interface. So now let's let's go to the line tool. Click down on that drop down uh, triangle arrow. Click on it. The, you see that there's two different options to create a line. We want to select the center line. Center line is a construction line. What that means is this line is for us to use to help us uh, create a, a part. This construction line is only there to help us, so it's not, it cannot be used to create a, a, a shape, an object. So click on that corner, draw a line upward, and then exit the tool by double click on the escape uh, key or right click and select the select option. Now let's instead of keep going back and forth to uh, get different tools to use, if you hit on the short key S, a small window what uh, some of the common tool will pop out for us to select. Right, so now let's select the smart dimension tool. Click on that construction line that we just made. Drag it out to change the dimensions. Click to the drop down menu of the circle tool. Select the first uh, option of to create a circle. Go to the end of the construction line. Simply make a circle. Hit S again. Go to smart dimension. Define the uh, dimension of the circle. And we want that to be 3.3 millimeter. Now, hit S again and select the circle creation tool again. And we want to create a larger circle at the same uh, at the same uh, center point that we previously created the small circle. In this manner, and let's define that circle again, which is six. Notice how this menu pop out. It's because that we already defined how large the circle should be. Notice how it's a black color. When that happens, just exit out by hitting the escape key or click on cancel. Now we would uh, click uh, S, select the line tool, make the connection of the circle to the bottom, click OK for that, and click that connection, then double click on the escape key to exit. If you zoom in, you just created this L-shaped line. Now, up in this point, I only show you how to create a line. But say you want to remove a line, how do you do that? Click S again to um, uh, to pop out that menu. Select the uh, Trim Entity tool. Click on that, and there's a, again multiple options for you to trim to remove a line. For power trim to use it, select Power Trim option. Hover over the area you want to remove. Click anywhere that close to that area. Uh, right, left click down and hold and drag to the area you remove and then release. That is how you make a uh, trim. Now let's exit out our sketch. Notice how our second entry is the sketch number two. Make sure we select that. Go to extrude tool again. And then now to view the, uh, the object at a different angle, you want to click on your scroll wheel on your mouse to give you a different perspective or you can use the spade create and view using the the Q option. Now let's reverse the direction of the extrusion into the uh, 3D object and change the uh, depth of the extrusion. We want the depth to be 14.5 millimeter. Click okay, save. Now we have just created the overall shape of the hinge. 
Let's move on and use an extra cut to cut out two holes for the screw. To do that, let's create a sketch on top of this uh, square surface. So click on this square surface, click on sketch. Notice how we created sketch number three and we are in sketch tab, right? So now hit the save bar, select this front view. And we're going to go to the line tool, get the construction line and draw a line across in this manner and exit out by hitting the skip key twice. Now let's hit S, get the circle creation tool, create a circle here, escape, smart dimension, and we want our circle to be three millimeter. And now we have to define, notice how it's still a blue circle sketch, even though we have defined the, the di diameter of the circle. What just mean it is the circle doesn't have a fixed position, doesn't have a fully defined position. Let's, let's go and define the position of it. Click the top edge and the circle. And enter 7.5. Same thing, click on the circle and edge, the edge of the other direction, 7.5 in this manner. Of course, we can draw the same circle on the opposite end, but there's a shortcut that we can use to avoid doing repetitive uh, drawing or tasks. Go to the uh, sketch command bar, click on the mirror entity option. Now it asks us to select first the entity to mirror, which is going to be the circle. And then the second option is mirror about. You want to mirror about this diagonal construction line. Now it gave us a preview of where the circle is going to be replicate or mirror, which is there at the right spot. Simply click OK to select it. Now we want to exit the sketch. Make sure that we select sketch number three, select it. Then go to the extruded cut option, click on it. Again, hold down your scroll. You can view where the extrude cut is going to be which is right there. However, we can simply select a different option of uh, extra cut. In this case, we will select through all and it's automatically find the surface of the, uh, the end surface of where it should cut through. Click OK. Now notice you have just created choose circle cut out. Now let me show you how to use a non-sketch feature. Up to this point, we only use sketch feature, which means it's required to create a 2D sketch for it to use, use the, the, the tool and feature tab to create a 3D object. So now I will show you how to use the non-sketch feature. Go to the feature tab. Under the fillet tool, click on the drop down menu, select the chamfer option. Then it will ask you item to chamfer. You want to click on the uh, the outer ring of the uh, this clear the selection. You want to click the only the outer uh, the outer ring of the surface. So you want to select that and select this also. Change the uh, the depth to two millimeter if it's not already there, and then click OK. So you have just modified a three D object without creating a sketch. Next, we're going to save this hint. To save it, go under File, Save or Save As. Simply name it, uh, say Hinge. Save it where you want. So in this case, I'm going to save it in the uh, desktop. Now let's create the pin of the hint. So again, let's open a new solid window. Go on that uh, new uh, icon, click on it. Select the part again. So now you're in a new window. What do we do? We made a new uh, new part window. Go and uh, change the measurement unit. Now let's go to the front plane. Sketch on it. So select the front plane. Hit S. Go on the line tool. Get uh, get a construction line. Create a construction line. Again, go, create construction line. Now, notice how it's a right angle. To make sure that you have a right angle there, click on the smart dimension. Simply click on 
Follow the line. Notice how I tell you it's a 90 degree angle. So click out. Let's us now create the pin. So let's define the uh, diameter of our construction line. Click on this. We want this to be 1.3 millimeter. And this line to be 35 millimeter. Zoom out to get a better perspective. What is what we want? Now, say you have a construction line, you want to use that construction line as a, uh, a line in your overall part. How do you do that? First, you have to select the line, click on it, and then the menu of line property will pop out, and you want under option, select uh, for construction line, unselect that, and click OK. Now you have a solid line. It's no longer a construction line. Do that for the bottom line also, and uncheck the construction line. So now you have a solid line that you can use. Now hit S and select the line tool again. Zoom in. Select the end point along the line and draw upward. Make sure it's a, it's a uh, vertical relationship. Notice how the, uh, there's a yellow box with a line pop out. If you are not at a vertical relationship, that yellow box won't pop out. Now to exit, right click to Open the your pop out menu and select the select option. Go S again. Get smart dimension. Click on the line you just drew to set the uh, to define the dimension. And you want that to be thirty two. Again, go to the line option. Draw a line out. Draw a line upward. And connect it to the, the first line we created. Smart dimension. Define this area. That to be 1.7 millimeter. Define this area. That will be 3 millimeter. And this should be it. Let's double click on the skip key to exit everything. Exit the uh, sketch feature. Make sure you select your sketch number one. Click on the revolve bar slash base tool. Now it's revolving, but you first have to define the uh, axis where the re revolving would be happening right now. So we want to select this specific line right here. Click on it. I'll give you a preview of how the revolving will look if you agree to it. Click the check mark to confirm the option. Now you have just create the object using revolve ex extrude. Now let's use the fillet tool, which is a, a non sketch feature to smooth out the rough surfaces. 90, 90 degree angle for the hinge. So click on the fillet tool, select the edge, then change the value to be 2 millimeter. Then click OK. Now we have just finished creating the hinge. Let's save this part by going under File, Save at, or simply hit Ctrl S, and this is our pen. Save it at the same spot, desktop. Click OK. Next part is making assembly. To do that, go to New, File, Select Assembly. Double click on that. Now you are assembly. If you have your part open in an individual part in SolidWorks, it automatically asks you to select which part you want to drop in. So let's drop in the, uh, the hinge. Right now, you do you notice how you have your front, top, right plane as always, and this is the part you just drop in. I name it pin, pin part one. The app in front of it mean fix. Fix mean that that is your roughing point. You cannot change the location of that specific part. Let's undo that. So if you right click on it and select flow, then you, you now can move the part around. Now, a good practice is to fix your part to the three different plane. To do that, you want to hit uh, make and click on this drop down menu, select front, and then select the front of the hinge to align them together. Click the check mark to confirm your option. Again, just sending the top and top. Click, 
So right now we are fixing the three plane front top right plane of this assembly with the top with the front top right plane of the actual object hint. Click OK. Twice check it out. Notice we cannot move it anymore. This is a good practice to have, but it's not required to do. It's an extra step. Now let's go and add a second hinge to this. So go, go into your assembly, click on insert component. Now notice you can drop another hand into it anywhere and you can move this around by clicking and dragging it around. You can move it everywhere. Now let's, uh, um, now we will make this two part together into a hint format. Go into make, zoom in and select Select the cylinder inside of one part and the cylinder of the other part. Notice they are on top of each other with the same orientation, which we don't want to do. In this pop out menu, you want to select the flip make alignment. Like that, so they're in opposite direction. Notice how solid work automatically help us select concentric mode for this main. If it's not pre-selected, please simply click on the relationship that you want the mate to have. So click the check mark twice to confirm the option. Now it, it fixed at the spot that we want to. But notice how it overlap. And not exactly as we want to. Right, you can just drag it all the way out here. And they not fix at the same alignment. To fix that, simply go mate again. Make the two side. Double click on the check mark. Now notice how they are a lot popular and they're not moving from each other. Lastly, let's add the pin then. Drop the pin. Again, use make to align them properly. Click on that. Make. Notice it doesn't move, but you can move it in uh, one direction. Let's fix that by using make again. Make the side of one the hinge, and the side of the pin. Click OK on that. Now you have just created a 3D hinge. To save it, simply go to File, Save. Notice how it says Symbol, simply enter pin. And pin assembly. Save it desktop. And that completes our tutorial of hint and pen.